a very warm welcome to all myself dr hina vaish and today i'm going to talk about incentive spirometry incentive spirometry has been used since decades in various respiratory pathology patients post surgical patients and recently it has been used prominently in covid-19 patients as well here in the first slide you can see two devices the first one with three chambers is the flow oriented device and the other one is the volume oriented device so let's first understand what is incentive spirometry incentive spirometry is also known as sustained maximal inspiration it actually mimics a natural sigh mechanism by use of a incentive spirometer the patients are encouraged to take long slow deep breaths this device provides patient with a visual feedback so they can get a visual feedback when they use this device and so when they inhale at a predetermined flow rate or volume and sustain the inflammation for at least few seconds it helps them now the question is that why do we use it how this device helps the patient basically the incentive spirometer use increases the transpulmonary pressure by transpulmonary pressure i mean that it is the pressure difference between the alveolar pressure and the intrapleural pressure in the pleural cavity which is needed for pulmonary ventilation so by use of this device there is increase in the transpulmonary pressure there is increase in inspiratory volumes which improves the inspiratory muscle performance and thus it helps to reestablish or simulate the normal pattern of pulmonary ventilation and when the patient use this device on repeated intervals or on a regular basis the airway patency may be maintained and lung atelectasis is prevented and sometimes it is reversed so this device is basically indicated in a lot of patients the patients with the presence of pulmonary atelectasis or conditions which predispose them to the development of pulmonary atelectasis or the patients who have chances of development of uh, pulmonary atelectasis like uh, post surgical patients with upper abdominal or thoracic surgeries neurosurgery patients or lower abdominal surgery patients patients with prolonged bed rest patients with uh, surgery after copd or the patients who have lack of pain control then the patients with the thoracic or abdominal binders after surgeries patients with restrictive lung defects associated with dysfunctional diaphragm or involving uh, respiratory musculatures patients with the uh, inspiratory capacities less than 2.5 liters patients with uh, neuromuscular diseases patients with spinal cord injury then the patients in whom it can help to prevent atelectasis associated with acute chest syndrome uh, like in patients with sickle cell disease in patients undergoing cabg and in the ongoing pandemic it has been widely used in covid-19 patients to improve the pulmonary ventilation now the question is that how this device is to be used there are two types of devices the flow oriented or the volume oriented the flow oriented is based on that how much flow is being generated by the patient that will help to raise the balls and the volume oriented is a single chamber device in which the ball will be raised depending on that how much volume is being delivered how much volume is being generated by the patient so the patient is instructed to hold the spirometer in upright position and exhale normally then place the lips tightly around the mouthpiece so basically if we look on this these devices the mouthpiece is there so the patient has to exhale normally hold the 
spirometer in upright position and then place the lips, secure the lips tightly around the mouthpiece. Next is that the patient should slowly start inhaling to raise the ball in flow oriented or volume oriented. So when the patient will inhale through the mouth, the patient should not inhale through the nose. So patient should inhale because the mouthpiece is there secured in the lips. So the patient should inhale drawing air through the mouth and try to raise the ball. So when the patient will generate the flow, the ball will be raised in the flow oriented volume or if the patient will generate the flow what adequate amount of volume the ball will be raised to that volume and the volume oriented there are markings that how much volume has been inhaled by the patient so either of the two can be used at maximum inhalation whatever amount the patient has inhaled the patient is asked to hold the breath for few seconds and then the patient should exhale the patient ideally should exhale by removing the mouthpiece from the mouth Now the question is that how much of this device should be used? What is the frequency of use of this device? So international guidelines have been published and they say that either 10 breaths every 1 to 2 hours while awake or 10 breaths 5 times a day or 15 breaths every 4 hours. These, any of these 3 protocols can be selected. There are various hazards and complications. If over practice of insensitive spirometry is being done or if it is not practiced adequately, it is ineffective unless it is performed as instructed. If it is used for more number of times than recommended, then hyperventilation or respiratory alkalosis can happen and CO2 may wash out carbon dioxide may wash out because of hyperventilation. Then the patients who are on oxygen therapy, it can lead to a hypoxemia secondary to interruption of prescribed oxygen therapy. So when the patients are on oxygen therapy, an incentive spirometer is used. So continuous, there is a, a interruption in the delivery of the oxygen. So if the patients are on high amount of oxygen, in such cases, either incentive spirometers available with oxygen pot should be used or intermittent incentive spirometry should be given. So if the patient is on uh, suppose 6 to 8 liters of oxygen and the patient uh, and it has been observed that the patient may, the saturation is falling in spite of giving continuous spirometry. In such cases, it should not be practiced continuously. In those cases, breaks should be given. So for 5 repetitions, incentive spirometry can be given and then for few breaths, oxygen uh, mask or prong can be reused. So if uh, the patient is on 6 to 8 liters, they will not be on prongs, they will be probably on the oxygen mask. So they can be reused and then for few breaths, let the patient take breath through the oxygen mask and then again patient can practice 5 breaths. So intermittently can it can be practiced. So break those 10 breaths or 15 breaths into 2 to 3 repetitions. So hypoxemia will not be there. And breath hold is important that will help to maintain the collateral ventilation and saturation will probably improve. If over practice of this device is done, then again fatigue is a problem. The patient may get fatigued and they will not be able to use the device adequately, which is again going to be ineffective and it will not yield any good results. Infection can also happen if it is not stored properly. So sterility has to be maintained in mouthpiece need to be cleaned on regular basis. There are several contraindications as well to the use of this device. This is not like that this device can be used in any of the patients. There are several contraindications and it is always important that if you know the indications well and good but contraindications should be, you should be aware of the contraindications as well. So patients who cannot be instructed or supervised to assure appropriate use of device, they should not be uh, forced to use this device, uncooperative patients or patients who are unable to understand the or demonstrate proper use of device, they should not be given the device until and unless they properly uh, handle it.
then very young patients and uh, with the patients with the developmental delays confused or deleterious patients or heavily sedated or comatose patients we cannot use this device on those patients patients who are unable to take deep breaths effectively due to pain diaphragmatic dysfunction or opiate analgesics in those patients it is important that the either if the patient is a surgical patient then the splinting can be used so we can use uh, splinting pillows or if splinting pillows are not available then a towel can be used and this uh, incisions can be splinted or binders can be used so that the patient may inhale effectively if the patient is not able to generate adequate inspiration with vital capacity less than 10 ml per kg or inspiratory capacity less than 33% of the predicted volume then also the patient shouldn't be forced in that condition there are several recommendations available uh, for the use of the incentive spirometry there is no quality evidence about lack of effect uh, showing a lack of effectiveness for prevention of post operative pulmonary complications after upper abdominal surgeries it is said that only incentive spirometry is not that much effective so it is recommended that incentive spirometry should be used with deep breathing technique so whenever you are using it in respiratory pathology patient or uh, neurological patients or other patients or even in covid 19 it is not just recommended that only incentive spirometry is given and whole soul uh, treatment effect is to be seen by that only it is recommended that it should be used along with breathing techniques then uh, if uh, there is sputum the directed cuffing and early mobilization is equally important and if the patient is into pain then optimal analgesia to prevent the post operative pulmonary complications and other complications in other populations as well and it has been seen that volume oriented devices are more effective it is suggested as compared to the flow oriented devices so that can be if available that can be used if it is not available flow oriented devices can be used it is a very small device but a very very useful device if used properly and with proper recommendation